So in today's video we're going to be making our own bezels for our resin pieces using art clay. Let's go! We are back. Really exciting one today. I've not seen this one done before. If it has I do apologise. So I got this quite some time ago and I finally opened it yesterday to give it a try. I was quite nervous. I looked up some tips and tricks. I'm not a pro at this so don't judge me. Um, I got the 50 gram pouch and so you get two 25 gram packets and inside it's just clay it's a really soft clay and when we fire this with our torch it then turns into silver so that made me this is one that i made yesterday for a tiktok um, i gave it a really good buff up with what i had again my tools aren't brilliant but i'm really really happy with that for a first ever attempt so what i'm aiming to do is just Feel this. I'm going to cheat today. I am going to be using UV resin, but I would recommend doing two part. It's got better uh, UV protection. So we're going to make a bezel today and then we are going to put something inside the bezel. Right, let's get started. Actually, before we begin, I've done some maths. <laughs> now this is quite, it's fairly chunky really, but that actually weighs three grams. So for this 50 gram pouch, we can make 16 of these pendants. Now that works out at the cost of $5.50 per pendant. And I don't think that's bad. Now if you buy the smaller pouches, um, say you get the 10 gram pouch, which is probably good for if you just want to give it a try, that's $27. And you can only make uh, three of these with that. And that would cost $9 per pendant. So, I mean, get the $10 one if you, uh, the, <laughs> the 10 gram one, if you want to just practice with it and see how you get on. I mean, I know it's not cheap, but it really is super, super cool to play with. Uh, the 20 gram pouch is $42, I do believe. Um, and that works out $7 per pendant. And I think you can make six or seven at a push. But you can try different molds, different shapes, different sizes. You can even try a freehand if you want. Um, anyway, let's start. So we just need to take out a small amount of the clay. You can see how soft this is. I really do recommend sealing that pouch again. Just so that it doesn't set. And what we can do is just shape that. And just lay that inside. You do have to push it. Just manipulate it into the mold cavity. Any excess we can clean up afterwards. Just make sure you're really pushing this down. As always, massive shout out to my channel members. Thank you very much. Anyone who's new to my membership, I did put up some. Uh, I did put up some new macro shots from my last video. Hope you like them. And thanks to anyone who's bought me a coffee or a super thanks. So I'm just working that in. And the good thing about doing this in a mould is that we can flip it over and we can see if there's any air bubbles from the underneath. We don't want air bubbles because that would be a lot harder to work with once it's fired and set to kind of polish it to a nice finish. So we really do want to push that down and then just fill any of the gaps with more clay. It can stick to your fingers, but don't worry. So yeah, I'm going to finish this off and just packing it. And I'm just going to keep flipping it over. I can see up here, there's some gaps. And over here, so I'm just going to continue packing that down. And then I will restart the video. So once that's packed down, you can just go round the edges and just clear that up a little bit. But what we do need to make sure of is that our knobbly bit for the hole is showing. So just find that. And then just, again, push that down, make sure there's no air 
inside the mold and as I was saying you can just go around the outside of the mold and just clean that up a little bit I mean what I did with mine yesterday was I did drill the hole again and there you can see it just there and you can see some uneven and fingerprints I mean you can make fingerprint uh, jewelry with this but I'm just gonna dip my finger in some water and just smooth around the whole piece because those small areas where it's not blended are going to show that it just creates more work afterwards to buff that out so once you're happy the recommendation is to let that dry for 24 hours but I'm going to cheat you could put it on a heat mat. It will probably dry a lot quicker. But I do recommend just being patient and waiting that 24 hours. And then we can just clean up that mess. I've read online that people can use have used hair dryers to dry it quicker. And don't think this is too technical for you, it's not. I managed to do one yesterday for the first time. The trick is with the firing, making sure that it's it's fired properly. Again, just smoothing that out to get rid of any imperfections. And I can clean up the rest afterwards. Okay, once your clay is dry, we're going to demold it but let me just quickly what I do is I hold this up and you can pause but it's got some really good instructions in here and I'll just scroll it so you can pause the video if you need to it's non-toxic really easy to follow and there's lots of YouTube videos on this as well again I might not be following these instructions you know precisely so once we've got our clay dry, we're just going to manipulate the mould just to loosen it a bit. Now someone on my TikTok video that I uploaded yesterday suggested that you could make this tidier before firing it. Now the only thing I'm worried about doing is, is, is snapping. I would much rather work with it when it's um, turned into silver. So we just got to be careful because it can be fragile at this stage. And there it is. You can see just there what I meant about a bubble in the mould. But we can sand that down and if need be we can even make that the back. Because there are some imperfections there. So it is now just a case of firing this. So I recommend better protection than what I've got on my hands. <laughs> Just be safe because this is the bit where it's going to get hot. So I've just got some cement and I'm just going to rest that. I might have to lower it down a bit. Just like that. And the reason why I'm angling it is that there's airflow behind this because I this is a soldering mat this can withstand a lot of temperature um, but I just want to be careful that it's not going to penetrate through um, and I'm not at risk of anything melting just make sure there's nothing around that's going to catch fire like dried flowers <laughs> so the one I did yesterday was using my handy little micro torch that's a refillable but I broke this a long time ago so to get this to work I have to hold in the lighter whilst holding down the trigger and it, it just got a bit of a you know a bit of a pain so if you have got a better one it's definitely recommended to use a bigger torch for this but I picked up this really neat little one brand new one and it works absolutely fine also make sure you're in a ventilated space so once we start firing I'm gonna hold the torch quite close to the piece and just work our way around and you can see that smoke this is why it's important to be in a ventilated space 
That is the binding burning off. See that smoke? <laughs> We're just going to keep working our way around. And if you see a flame, just stop for a moment. And then continue. And we're just burning away that binding and just heating up the clay so that the silver particles can combine and bond together. So I did this until the piece was glowing red. It was that hot. And then I, I gave it a break for about a minute and then fired it again. Because I'll show you an example I did last night for this video of what can happen if you don't fire it enough I'm going to pause the video it's going to take me a good few minutes to get this really really hot this is why a bigger torch is probably a lot better than this one but the instructions do state all of the times, the correct times needed for firing. But I can see it's starting to get red. It's hard to show in this in this light. But once it's glowing a bit more, I'll show you. So there you can see it. It's starting to glow red. Which is what we want, it's a really good sign. So we're just going to make sure that that glows the whole way round, so that there's no weak spots. And as mentioned, I'm going to let that sit for about a minute and then do this process a couple of times. You can see the red in that hole. So this one here is one that I did intentionally just to see how easily it was to break. So this wasn't fired correctly, although it looks silver on the outside, it hasn't bonded, the heat hasn't penetrated enough. Now I didn't let this one glow red, so that's why. And what I did with the other half is I really fired that until it's red and I cannot snap that. That is solid, solid silver. So I'm now going in with the third cycle and I think this will be the final one. And when I said at the beginning I haven't seen anyone do this, I mean making a bezel for the resin aspect i didn't mean as in actually creating the silver from the clay lots of people have done this i haven't seen a resin artist do this so it's just an idea i mean i know you can get cheap bezels but this is so versatile you can create so many different things with this and you could even get a stamping set To stamp it as fine silver. It's glowing. So you do not want to touch this. You want to let this cool down a lot because that is extremely, extremely hot. If I just hold my finger there, I can feel the heat coming off, even at that distance. It really is hot. So just be extremely careful. So just to give you an idea of just how hot that is. And that's been sitting there for about 30 seconds. So it's cooled down a bit already. So it's just cold water. And just to make sure, <laughs> because I don't want to burn my hands, I'm just going to leave that. Woo! That's where the, the cement is still really hot. I'm just going to leave that for a good 15, 20 minutes, just to make sure. So there we have it. All ready to make look pretty. Now if I just scratch the surface of this, you'll see the silver coming through. See that? So for the next stage, most people have got one. I'm just gonna use my handheld Dremel. Well, it's not a Dremel, that is a brand. <laughs> this is a cheaper Amazon one. So I'm gonna start off with just a wire brush now I do apologize bits are gonna fly off make sure you've got eye protection face protection 
because if these little wires fly off, they can hurt. And just make sure that's really, really tight. I'm going to put it on the lowest speed. And I'm just going to very gently just go round, and you can see that white film just coming off. I'm just going to go around the whole piece now. I mean, if you've got proper buffing tools, then I'm really jealous. <laughs> But I'm just making do with what I've got. So that took just a couple of minutes. Obviously the difficult part is getting inside. And we want to round off these outside edges. And the inner edges. Just to make sure there's no sharp bits. So I've just swapped my tool. And I'm just going to run around. Just run around the inside. as best we can to get rid of this white coating you can already see it's coming up really nice and then whilst I've got this tool on you can see see that area just on that side there whoops what we can do sorry if you can't hear me let's turn it off that might help what we can do is just bring that down, just blend it until that area there is kind of gone, really. Using the same tool. Just gonna work around it. And just round that edge off. It takes a bit of time, but it is worth it. Okay, so what we're left with is something like this. So that'll be the front, and there is the back. Now we just need to buff out these scratches. So I've just changed to this tool here. Now this one is messy. <laughs> these aren't, uh, they don't hold together very well. I'm just going to go over that until it's kind of a bit shinier. Okay, so a lot of the scratch is gone. Now this is a must. This is a silver polishing cloth. And I actually really enjoy this part. Is we're just going to hold it. And we're just going to rub the silver onto the cloth. And you can see, what it does is it really does buff this silver up. It may take you 15, 20 minutes. Just keep turning it and, and just keep rubbing fresh areas. And just work your way around. So you can already see after a, just a couple of minutes, it's already starting to shine. So another little tip on the cloth, just a dab of toothpaste. And that will really bring up the shine. Just to finish it off, it doesn't have to be perfect. Handmade stuff doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to look like it's handmade. It really is shining that silver up. So there we have it. After 15 minutes of rubbing, my arm is aching and feels like it it's gonna fall off <laughs> right so now we're just gonna make that hole a little bit bigger so I'm just gonna use my handheld small drill and just I think this might snap it's the gaps in it are a little bit too big just a little bit at a time you can see the silver starting to come out of the hole just be careful if you use the power tool you've got a chance of it slipping I've only gone in a small amount I'm going to now try and go in from the back 
and just hopefully there we go so I can now fit a jump ring onto that so now we need the bezel tape. Obviously clean your surface, you don't want any debris getting into your resin. Now I quite like it as it is, but I'm a resin artist. So <laughs> I need to put resin in it. So I've got my small square of bezel tape. I'm just gonna drop that on and then just really push that down onto the tape just to make sure it's secure. And make sure it's clean inside. I'm seeing stuff that's underneath, which is fine. So with our UV resin, again, you could do lots of different things with this. I'm just doing this as an example. And because I can then get away with posting this in resin groups <laughs> on Facebook. Just to show you that you can make your own bezels, all handmade. Where's my dotting tool? And just spread that around and make sure there's no bubbles. Just make sure it touches the frame. And this is just the initial layer, just to hold the flower down. The flowers, it's just an easy one to go with. Can't see any bubbles. just like that so I've just got these small flowers that come in the let's resin UV kit I don't know what I'm gonna do yet hopefully I'm gonna make it look pretty come on no <laughs> just gonna pop that up in this top left corner And then maybe some greenery down the other side. Yeah, so I think I'm just going to snap a section of this leaf off. And just pop that down the right hand side. And just make sure they're not overlapping. If that would do. So now we're just going to cure that. Obviously, if you're doing this with two part, you would do what I've just done, let that cure, and then add your second layer, just to prevent those flowers from floating. And then we're just gonna give that a quick blast underneath. I still need to find a piece of clear perspex to rest on this. <laughs> so I'm just gonna hold it. And now we're just gonna to top that up for the final part. And then I can give it a good polish up and dressing afterwards slightly domed so it's kind of matching the bezel and I'm just going to cover that just to make sure that any air that's in the flower can release just a pot just to prevent the UV light coming in from curing that okay once you're happy that all the bubbles have released just give that its final cure now we just carefully pull off our bezel tape Do it at an angle. Come on. And then I'm going to quickly dress it up and peel the rest of that tape off. <laughs> so, I'm really, really happy with that. Only my second proper attempt with the clay. As always, give the video a thumbs up, drop me a comment, and if you haven't subscribed, hit that button for me. So whether you want to incorporate your resin art or keep them plain, these are brilliant for gifts, birthdays, Christmas, Valentine's coming up. I know I'm leaving it a little bit too late, <laughs> but it gives you future ideas. And don't be scared to try this. It may seem expensive, but there is profit to be made if you're selling these on. I've popped mine on a sterling silver chain just so it displays a bit better. And this box is an LED box. I'm not sure if they're in the US. But it just brings out that sparkle. I know I need to give it a, a little bit more of a buff. But I'm really, really happy with that. 
it's got a really nice reflection to the resin as well so yeah have fun guys and i'll see you for the next one bye for now